Hey all. So as you can already tell from the title of this video, we are bringing two kittens into our house this week. Now I don't have them yet as the time that I'm filming this intro, but I just kind of wanted to take you through some things that we have done to prepare. I want to tell you the story of how this even came to be. I want to show you when we actually bring them home. I am so freaking excited. Um, I just, I just kind of want to show you all of it. And to be honest, this video a lot is going to be for me as well, because I want this to look back on. I, you know, kittens grow so freaking fast and I want to be able to look back on this and see when they were little babies instead of maybe like slightly bigger babies, because they're always babies. First, I want to kind of go into the background of how all of this happened. So if you do or do not know, um, we lost our cat Spooky in March, at the end of March, and she was with us for 18 years. She was slash is the absolute love of my life. I love that animal more than anything. Ah, I don't want to cry. <laughs> and I absolutely love that cat. Um, but kind of as she started getting older, my husband and I had talked about like, God, you know, after this, you know, what do we want? Of course, we weren't like, oh, well, you know, as soon as that one's gone. But, you know, we just talked. We're like, we do want pets again. We knew we wanted to always have pets. But at the same time, we were like, it's going to be a while, obviously, but we knew we wanted to have two cats. We also eventually want to get a puppy down the road. But for now, we knew we wanted to have two cats because one thing I always kind of regret is that we didn't have a companion for Spooky. I mean, she was very well loved and she lived a very long, a very healthy life. But it is always kind of recommended that if you can, always have a companion for your cat. You know what I mean? Cats love being with other cats for the most part. And especially if you can adopt two litter mates at a time, you know, that's always good. So we knew that we wanted this down the road. But to be honest, again, she passed at the end of March and I was thinking November. That was kind of the timeline in my head. And I was like, we're going to have a kitten for the holidays. That'll be kind of when we're ready. So shortly after she passed, one of my friends reached out to me who fosters kittens as, you know, from a rescue. And she was like, you know, I, are you going to get a pet again at some point? And I said, yes, but not for a very long time. And she said, okay, well, just in case, do you want me to kind of keep an eye out for you? Like, what are you probably looking for? And I said, Siamese. So at this point, I'm addicted to Siamese cats. They are loud, they are sassy, they have attitude, and I love it. I just love the spunkiness, and I do feel like there's a difference in breeds, and I feel like Siamese cats just have that, I was going to say catitude. Unsubscribe immediately. Unsubs just unsubscribe. But seriously, they have that attitude and they have that spunk that I love so much, and I was like, we are going to want to adopt a pair of Siamese kittens. And she was like, yeah, that doesn't happen in rescue a whole lot. You might find an adult Siamese cat or a senior, but you really don't find Siamese kittens in rescue, but I will keep an eye out for you. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And about three weeks ago, she messaged me and she was like, hey, guess what? And she let me know that someone she kind of works closely with in that genre posted this picture of a kitten that they found on the streets. They knew where the cat's mother was and she was eventually trapped, spayed and released again. She is a feral cat, but she did have a litter of kittens and they wanted to make sure that these kittens were okay. So they were able to trap this baby cat and they also trapped baby cat's brother who was a tabby. They knew that baby cat and tabby cat had a sister who was also Siamese. So I was really curious in the additional cat along with this Siamese cat, because I was like, oh my God, a pair of Siamese kittens that we could adopt? A pair of Siamese kittens? Oh my God. Long story short, too late. <laughs> they unfortunately were not able to find the sister, the additional Siamese. My hope is that somebody saw this beautiful Siamese kitten walking along the street and they took her for themselves and they are raising her in a loving, happy home. That's what, that's the story that I'm going to go with. That's the story I'm going to stick with. It came down that the Siamese that they did capture, this little boy was bonded to his brother, the tabby. So we decided to adopt them both. We went and met them about a week ago and they were so cute. They were super, super playful and they were just so sweet. They were a little skittish. They definitely were, but we were only there for like 20 minutes to a half hour and we just fell in love. And since then, <laughs> things have been a little crazy in this house. One of the first things that I wanted to do was kind of kitten proof the house because the last time I had a kitten was 2003. 
my husband and I were both 22 at the time and we lived in a one bedroom apartment. So there wasn't a whole lot to really do. And I'm not gonna lie, like I don't think we did anything. You know, the internet obviously was a thing in 2003, but it wasn't as robust as it is now. So it wasn't like I could just look up like how to cat proof my home and boom, everything comes up. So we just kind of guessed and then we brought her in and we opened the cat carrier and out she went and she lived her life. But now I have to admit I am a worried cat mom. So I wanted to protect the kittens from anything in this house that could harm them. So some things that we did, First, I did get a cabinet lock, and the only cabinet I have it on right now is the cabinet under our sink, which has a whole bunch of chemicals and cleaning supplies. We just don't want them getting into that, of course. We also kind of boarded up our staircase a little bit. So we have, it's not quite a spiral staircase because it goes in a square, but I mean, it technically is a spiral where they could look down through and possibly fall which is my worst nightmare. So we have some little plexi pieces up so that they can't fall just as they're kind of getting used to the house. And we also put up cardboard in some other spots they can't go through. Eventually that will all come down, but while they are still baby kittens and exploring their new world, we just want them to be as safe as possible. I also went ahead and got some of this cord wrap and I will go ahead and post a link down below in case anybody else is curious about this. That is so easy to wrap your cords in just in case they want to chew. And of course, you provide them with things to enrich them and to stimulate them so that they don't want to chew wires. But nonetheless, like I do have wires in this house. And if I can do something so simple as wrapping the wires just to protect them, I'm going to do it. And then came the catification. This is a term I have just recently learned that you want to catify your house. You want to add levels. You want to add things of interest to them. You just want to make your house as cat friendly as possible to again, keep them stimulated, keep them interested. So this involved a lot of putting stuff together. We wanted to buy the new kittens a cat tree. So we did, we got this like six foot five cat tree that goes almost all the way to the ceiling which is insane. We also bought a scratching post. We bought a bunch of scratching pads as well. We've got them beds. We just, we've gotten so many things and we also got them for the first, at least the first week they're here, we got them a playpen so that we can make sure that they're enclosed and not wandering around too much at first because also when we get them, they will have been freshly neutered. So we wanna make sure that they're not playing too much and maybe opening any wounds, anything like that. So we wanna keep a close eye on them. So the first week or so we'll be in that playpen, but in the playpen, we of course have a litter box. We of course have a bed. We have some toys, we have food, we have water, everything they technically need. And they were living in a playpen in the foster's home for at least the first couple weeks that they were there and then they were roaming around with the other kittens that were in the house. So they are used to other cats. They are used to being in a playpen and also out of a playpen. So we are excited to bring them in and you know, kind of give them a situation that's familiar to them so they're not too scared at first, but yeah. Honestly, I'm feeling kind of all kinds of ways right now, I'm not gonna lie, because again, as the date I'm filming this, it has been less than two months since we lost my cat. And there's definitely these weird grief and um, just guilt, guilt feelings going through me. Like I'm betraying my cat. And I know that this is completely normal. I know this because I Googled it and a lot of hits came up of other people who have felt the same way. But I'm like, I feel like I'm betraying my cat because I'm getting these other kittens so soon. But when my husband and I thought about it, of course we wanted to rescue. Rescue would be so wonderful. But to be honest, we thought we were going to have to purchase from a breeder because of how much we both like Siamese. And then when this Siamese came to us from a rescue off the street, literally off the street, we were like, you know what, this is, it's kismet. It's kind of meant to be. And maybe the universe is telling me, you know, these are my babies. Here is a nice, clean, fresh picture of the babies. The white one, the Siamese, will be Piper, and the gray striped tabby, Haggis. And yes, any time that Piper may, you know, flop down on to go to sleep or anything like that, I will be screaming, we have a Piper down! There's a Piper down! We have a Piper down! I repeat, a Piper is down! Plus 10 points if you know the movie but I'm excited to show when we bring them home, when I get to actually like hold my babies again in my arms, I'm excited to show you them. I'm excited to show me them because I miss them already, even though I've only met them once. Oh God, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm feeling so emotional right now.
wish me luck. Hey Tim, where are we going? What? Kittens. We're gonna get kittens. We have some little babies in here. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're coming home. So for their first official appearance, we have Piper and Haggis. These are my, these are my two gentlemen. I love them very much already. I'm going to hand them off because they are very playful right now. <laughs> you want to just put them down? You're going to probably hear them in a second rolling around a ball. This is what's going to happen. They're wandering around right now. <laughs> we are on day four of having the kittens. And as I mentioned, on day one, they hid almost all day. They came out in the morning, you know, we got them at night on Thursday and on day one, Friday, they came out in the morning and right after breakfast, they were playful and like slightly playful, very hesitant, but then they literally found a spot. Like we blocked off all unsafe hiding spots, but they found a spot underneath our nightstand and they stayed there. When I say all day, I mean all day. They came out to eat, to drink, to use the litter box, but that was it. And then they would go right back under if I tried to pet them, if I tried to give them treats while they were under there and kind of coax them out gently with positive reinforcement. Haggis definitely hissed at me a lot. So I started going online. I was like, how long do kittens hide? And there were sites that said this could take up to a month. And in my head, I was like, if they hide, 
for a full month, I'm going to be really, really sad. But little by little, like that night, even the day that they hit all day, that night they came out and they started playing a little bit more and everything was getting a little bit better. By the next day, they were fine. They were really exploring their space. So we started opening up rooms one by one. Like I thought they were going to be in our bedroom alone for a full week. We are on day four and they have the full run of two floors of our house. We technically have three floors. They have full run of two floors and they like have blossomed completely. They love their cat tree. They love certain treats. They love screaming for food. Like we are starving them, even though we are definitely feeding them the appropriate amounts. I am very positive of that. Their personalities are already starting to come out. Piper is slightly more chill and goes to sleep really, really hard. And Haggis does not like it. If you pay Piper too much attention, he will just come right over and get in your face. If you're taking too many pictures of Haggis, he will get right in your face and stand on your phone. So maybe that's going to make my phone time a little bit less. It could be a good thing. It'll bring me in a little bit, but I just, I adore them both so far. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest, I have had a couple moments where I have to take a little bit of a breath because again, it has been only two months since we lost our other cat and I have moments where I still miss her so fiercely um, but I will say that it's nice having kittens in the house it's nice having something to care for again and to love on and to snuggle with and they've just they've been wonderful and I can't wait to watch them grow so no this channel is not going to turn into uh, you know a channel that's all cats all the time but I might show you them from time to time, give you little updates on how they're doing because kittens grow so freaking fast. Please, you know, keep an eye out on my Instagram. They're probably gonna be all over my Instagram stories. I'm just, I'm just loving them. I'm sure they are going to be all over my TikTok because I need to capture as much video while they're still babies. I'm picturing that whole like TikTok of that, I'm just a baby. That's it. So thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into the life of me getting some new babies to care for. And I just adore them already. If you like kittens or small furry animals in general, I'd love if you give this a thumbs up. That always helps out my channel. You all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for kitten content. Those are all glitter fallout. And as always and forever, you are super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with my whole heart. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.